right, we are back. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Countdown City Geek Cast. My name is Steady. Joining me, as always, is the one and only Maddie B. Ew! I'm very excited about today's episode, boys. Let's have one. This is going to be exciting. Uh, if you're in the chat, say what's up. Say hello. Amber, we see you. She says, woo, let's party. Joe's here. I expected him to be here early. <laughs> he course. says, uh, hello, fellas. What's going on, Joe? You're going to be excited, my friend. And this is all thanks to you as well. Uh, folks, we got a great show for you. We're going to start off with a fantastic uh, interview guest. He is... Uh, one of the reasons um, why I'm such a big fan of horror, um, this franchise started in the right time when I was in high school, and uh, he helped uh, bring to life one of the last, I would say, great original uh, horror creatures. Um, yeah, creature horror. Had, Probably yeah, the last haven't, one. Like, haven't had a lot since I, that I can think of. But honestly, I'm a huge fan of the franchise, and we're so excited to have him here today. Please welcome to the show the one and only Jonathan Breck. Johnny, how you doing, sir? Hey, hey Ted, Matthew, what's up, fellas? Chin -chin. What's going on? Cheers. Yeah. What's going on, man? Cheers. Kick this thing off, right? Yeah. Right, here we go. And so uh, you you did say you wanted to go by Breck, correct? Yes. Yeah, Breck. please. Welcome Correct. to the Geek Cast, brother. Mm -hmm. Let's have a good Thank time. You, I'm so excited Pleasure to be here. I'm so excited you're on the show. You're because uh, me and Ted, we obviously we're nerds. We're geeks. We um, <laughs> like the you know the things that outside of the normal mainstream and, and Jeepers Creepers and uh, the Creeper character in general is one of my favorites. So it's it's an honor to have you here. Thank you, man. Glad to be yeah. here. San Antonio, absolutely, boys. absolutely. San Antonio boys, right. and you're you're a native Texan, born in Houston, am I right? I am born and raised in Houston, Texas for a long, long time. Went to New York, went to LA, and have found my way back back to Texas. And uh, I'll be here probably for the rest of my life. So I love hey, it. Love the sound of that. Absolutely. And my introduction, I I'm not exaggerating. Uh, we talked to to you about this a little bit beforehand uh the creeper the creeper was probably one of the last solid original sort of monster creatures that that came out in film everything else since then sort of has been like a rehash or like borrowed from something else but that creeper was just so unique <laughs> and so different at the time um i really want to hear your thoughts when you I know you auditioned and everything, but when you when you read the script for the first time, when you were learning about what this this creature was and how it moves or how it thinks, what was your first impressions about that? Well, it's kind of a it's kind of it's a, my feeling about you know being one of the last real monster movies. You know, such a respect now now that I made the movies for how to how hard it is make a regional monster movie you know first of all to write an original monster and the director right the writer director who created this character you know his own imagination um but he was a real creature feature he grew up watching the universal the great universal monster movies from the 50s an original monster movie but he also set out to do it uh, the right way. He wanted to do practical effects as much as he could in camera. He wanted to do real makeup. You know, that the creature makeup was extensive. It was a build. There, like, I bet there are close to 20 worked on that from start to finish. And it's just really expensive and laborious movie that way these days. And so most, most people do a lot in CG. You know, most people do just don't take the time to make an original monster movie um, because it's so expensive. And, um, and and we made it, you know, Victor made it that way intentionally. Um, it's kind of a love letter he saw in the 50s. And, and fortunately yeah. he did because that's what we have now, you know. Um, when, when I first got the script, it was a funny story. I was just an actor out in LA for a job. And... and 
they sent you know my agent called me and said hey we've got this and well first of all they said it's a francis ford coppola's producing the movie and i was like hey when do i need to be there you know, wow! I'll yeah, do whatever. Wow! Yeah, wow. Well, what a name yeah. drop! Yeah. When you and had, where? You had me. You had me at Francis. You know, you didn't have to yeah. say his last name. I knew who it was. Then they said, "Okay, the 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 lead character is a, is he's a movie, and he um, and so we're going to send you the script, and they want you to come in and audition. Tell me much about it." And I got the script, and I was looking through it and I was like, well, you know, so I called my, my agent. And I was like, well, so how do they want me to audition for this? And they want you to create the character and just come in the room as the character. <laughs> it was, it was incredible because I got to spend about a week and a half, never get this much back then. I, I got like a week and a half have to just sleep on it. Think about it. Obviously it's all about, about behavior. He can, Communicates through all of his movements. Yeah, um, and I saw uh, the yeah. actually the audition tape, and it was. You did. Uh, I, I think yeah. I think the scene was called uh, the sniff. So yeah. you had to get that um, that creepy vibe and get super close to them while you were you know presenting as this character. How much did you know about what the character would look like before you started the process of developing the character? So did they give you kind of a script I didn't know anything. Say, hey, yeah, so you didn't see what it would actually be until you got into the costume? No, and as a matter of fact, I never saw the script. They sent me a pair of <laughs> like three three sentences before I auditioned. Literally. Wow. Literally. A couple thousand years old. We know he eats people. <laughs> That's basically what I got. And wow. And I just kind of let my imagination go. Um, how his senses would be heightened right yeah and, and by the way matt you mentioned something they like smell well that's like in in actor speak that's the cardinal sin you're in the personal space of the casting director that's the first yeah. thing they tell you right yeah but when i character i was like fuck that <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. it's on baby <laughs> i i yeah. think i completely surprised him by throwing that cast casting director up against the wall on him you know i think it, i think they, was, were, they were really scared you know it was very so. intimidating and, and you're a very handsome guy you have a great head of hair but you shaved off <laughs> your your hair for the role and then yeah. i remember in this video the guy says your eyes were just piercing and they were that even just watching it i was like man that's you know you really pulled it off in you know even though you're something, in this you know yeah something if you have if you've never shaved your head <laughs> it's it's yeah. interesting, you know. It's, it's like I I, you know, I literally woke up the night before the audition and it, I just had a moment of inspiration, like, like three o'clock in the morning. Like, I got to shave my head. Yeah. Wow! I got to walk was... in the room complete, complete, completely shorn. This character wouldn't want to hassle with the cleanup, right? He'd want to be completely smooth. Oh yeah! I just I had that inspiration and I just went for it. And the very first time from the mirror with, without hair it's something really intense about not having on you you know it just you feel, feel exposed kind of in a really so uh, um i felt really powerful once i did that it, it was the kind of, kind of the last i had the character down i had the movements down and i knew kind of what i wanted to do but, but i woke up and i, I, I was like I'm only about 95% there. It just bothered me. I wasn't what it was. And then when I woke up, literally in the middle of the night with that inspiration, I was like, that's it. I shot that last gear just kind of I clicked into place. Yeah, and I could see how that would you work know? too, so, especially as an as an actor. You're, you're looking, you're trying to find the role. You're looking at the script and even getting rid of your ha hair subconsciously, that might've been like you kind of getting rid of Jonathan a little bit and diving fully into the character. So that's that's an awesome tidbit there. Uh, that's that's cool. That's why that's why we had you it on. Was, that, that's cool was, stuff to hear about. It was it was uh, it was the last little thing too, and, and it was also a great lesson for me. An actor as a human being, it's, it's like you know we don't follow yeah. our instincts enough. 
<laughs> we just don't have an instinct about something and then we usually talk ourselves out, out of it, right? For whatever yeah. reason. Uh, um, smart person takes over, right? And, and they, mm-hmm. they fuck us up, right? We need to. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what I, I did. And that, it, it, it changed my life, obviously, you know? Yeah. Uh, Breck, you have a fan in the chat. Uh, Joseph says, your audition was amazing, exclamation point. Um, Breck, also, it's your your audio is not – it's cutting out like very little. So it's like every 10 seconds. If if you want, maybe, maybe if you can try without the headset and see if that yeah. works. And if it doesn't, then we can just put the headset back on. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can. Is that better for you guys? Ooh. Um, yeah, my work tell. out. All right, so let's sing a song together. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I don't have a song prepared. But if you just uh, talk for a minute, talk about how great it is to be on the GeekCast. <laughs> well, can let's... You hear me? Well, tell let's... Us? <laughs> yes, yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us okay? I can, man. Oh, if I hate cool, it. cool. Anyway, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, getting back to the the trilogy, the Creeper trilogy, we we talked about the audition tape. Uh, let us know, like, what made you want to get into acting. We'll go a little bit further before the Creeper trilogy came around. Uh, what was it about acting, or did you just kind of fall into the industry? Sometimes it's just uh, you know happenstance for some people. You know somebody or you run into the right person and then everything just falls into place after that. How did uh, acting work out for you? Certainly didn't fall in my lap. That's for sure. I, I acted all through school. You know, I was raised in Texas, right? And um, in a fairly conservative home. You know, growing up wanting to be an actor, you know, my parents were like, uh, yeah, sure, you you're going to be an actor. I mean, you know, you know how A, A would equal C. Um, so, so I got, got out of college and, and got out into the, the core, kind of played the game, game for a couple of years. You know, you know and it was, it was like, I'm this for the rest of my life. And so, so um, came in one day. I quit my job. I rented a U. Did that thing, and I, I I drove to L.A. and I, but I, I just knew I had to do it. But movie and, and um, I think knowing what I know now, much harder about it because it. I, I, yeah, I went after that just to try and get my um. You know, I went out there a few months, and then I'll get a job. And, and you know, it took me a long time, time. and then I, I had a passion for, it and I figured to do it, I'd regret it for the rest of my life. I, absolutely, you took a shot and you went with it, and it paid off definitely. Uh, Breck, you know what? I'm gonna apologize. Can I ask you to maybe put the headset back on? I think the quality. <laughs> The quality went down just a little bit, so I think I think we'll probably get through it with the headset. Apologies for doing that. Headset. Um, it's, it's this world. Uh, the world has changed completely. I was out to eat earlier with uh, with my girlfriend, and uh, we, we're sitting there. We're watching like the service and everything. We're just sitting there thinking the world has never been the same uh, since COVID. And this is another example. Technical difficulties are abound. I tell it's you, the five five G upgrades have done nothing. Like it's nothing. the same, or sometimes yeah. there's still no coverage anymore. I get I get no cell phone service at my house. If if my Wi Fi goes out, I'm done. I'm toast. You know, I I had so many thoughts because I I rewatched uh, some of the movies recently, and I had so many thoughts about just the very little details that the creeper you know, distinguishes the creeper from like anything else. And they're so clever. They're so unique. The very first time we see the creeper sort of in a full portfolio, full body portfolio, 
you know, we see him dumping uh, something down a chute, right? But my favorite thing after that is he turns to look at this car that's passing by with, with Derry and Trish. And so this is you. And I always wondered, are you standing on some sort of a swiveling platform because your shoulders <laughs> are completely square to the camera mm-hmm. as the camera is moving? And it's so unique and it's something you've never seen I, that I can remember in another movie or even a horror movie just to see the creature. We still don't know who this person is at the time, not moving, but yet he's still always squarely positioned to be facing the vehicle as it's driving down this interstate highway. Hmm. I thought it was like so unique and so interesting. Was it like a swiveling platform and who came up with that idea? <laughs> you see me laughing when you funny story, Ted. That was the very first shot we ever shot Creepers movie. That was the the time that was really the moment where I we had the chance of doing something. I didn't even understand it at the time, but it felt felt weird. It just just felt, felt like everything kind of fell into. I'll never forget that scene. It was again, and Victor and I really really didn't. So. Trailer, which is basically the police car, you know, cameras on the on the car. It's like okay, um, in this shot, Derry are going to be driving by, jumping bodies down a pipe. Shot, right? I was like, we shot it a couple times. Action cut. That's great. That's great. We got this instinct, and so I, I. Walked over, Victor. I've got an idea. I want to try something. Victor is this way. He's a really, really cool. It was so much fun working with him because Victor together. It felt like that the whole. And he, he just he had the confidence. Um, and so he, he and I had that instinct. Think that was like the creeper that Trish and Derry are driving. He might. Have even know who it was in the drive. Um, he, matter of fact, you know, turn around because it, it, again, it's he, he can smell your fear. You know, that he, he sees him. It sensed to yeah. me just in the moment. It was just an insight to the end of the end of the house. And so, so, to your original question, Ted, or anything like that. It was just an instinct. I had to spend like that. I didn't come out to the edge of the house. After wow. I did that, I heard this. After he said, after I heard this laughing, I was like, and then uh, Victor needs you up at the tra- trailer. And so I ran laughing. He's giggling. I learned later that uh, if something. He laughed. He laughed, and so Victor was laughing. At him. No idea, you know. I don't know. And so, you know, that throughout the film, where it was almost like that way, you know. So it was yeah, a real experience shooting. Them. That's so cool. Um, Breck, we're still having some slight audio issues. So I think what we're going to do real quick, we'll take a, a couple of minutes break. If you're yep. watching the stream right now, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll kick this back on in a few minutes, see if we can get these uh, bugs worked out, and we'll be back on with Jonathan Breck. Be right back. 